Hey guys, how's it going? So we're gonna start talking about cellular respiration. And in order to start talking about it, I think it's a good idea to start looking at an overview. So we have one glucose molecule that's gonna enter the animal cell. We're gonna go through glycolysis. We're gonna form pyruvate. Pyruvate is gonna go inside the mitochondria, which is an organelle in the animal cell. We're gonna go through the Krebs cycle. Now this Krebs cycle is gonna feed the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is what's gonna kind of drive most of our energy synthesis or ATP synthesis. So we should start talking about how glucose enters the animal cell and the first few steps of glycolysis. So glycolysis is a multi-step biochemical pathway. Um, and in my opinion, before we start diving into the details of this pathway, it's kind of good to start talking about glucose. So we have glucose, which is an aldose, meaning that it has an aldehyde group. But we also have fructose. Fructose is a ketose, which means it has a ketone group. These two molecules are isomers to one another. Now, the reason why I'm bringing fructose up is because in one of the reactions of glycolysis, we turn glucose into fructose working with an isomerase. So I thought it would be a good idea to compare them now. So in this state, they're in their linear form, but we can have them in their cyclic form. Now, the reason why these molecules form cyclic structures is because we have a carbonyl and we have an alcohol on this molecule. Those two functional groups can react with one another. And in the case for glucose, we're gonna form a six-membered ring. In the case for fructose, we're gonna form a five-membered ring. Now, the reason why we're not forming four-membered rings or even three-membered rings is because of steric strain. Six-membered rings and five-membered rings are kind of the most stable. They have low steric strain and they don't put so much pressure on the molecule. So we have glucose and we have fructose. So let's start looking at kind of the pathway of glucose metabolism or cellular respiration. Now, one thing that we can notice is that glucose is a pretty hefty, pretty large biological molecule. And it, it's polar, it has a lot of oxygen on it, which is extremely electric negative. And so it's not gonna be able to diffuse through the bilayer. In this case, we have protein complexes called glut proteins that assist in moving glucose into the cell. Now, there's multiple subtypes, but I kinda just wanted to look at two. And in this case, I wanted to look at GLUT1 and GLUT4. GLUT1 protein complexes are kind of expressed in all cells, and they help with the transport of glucose into the cytoplasm or into the cell. Whereas with GLUT4 protein complexes, these are expressed from a hormonal response to insulin. Now, we're going to be talking about how insulin affects glycolysis and cellular respiration and how the alternate hormone glucagon affects gluconeogenesis and glycogen, but we're gonna be talking about that in a later video. But GLUT4 protein complexes are normally just expressed in skeletal muscle, the heart, and adipose tissue. Okay, so now we've officially found out how glucose goes inside the cell, so let's start breaking down glycolysis. Glycolysis, oh my goodness, I mix it up all the time. Okay, so, we have our first reaction. We're gonna turn glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. Now, we have to memorize, or you're probably gonna to have to memorize all the enzymes that help with each of these steps. Now, their names are really different, but the type of enzyme in which they are, you're gonna see a lot of kinases, a lot of isomerases, and so it's a good idea to kind of learn the general function, and so, we can match the general function with the name. So in this case, we're working with the hexokinase. Anytime we work with a kinase, we're gonna be moving a phosphoryl group. In this case, we're moving a phosphoryl group from ATP to glucose. Especially, we're gonna be moving the phosphoryl group to the sixth carbon. So glucose reacts with hexokinase to move a phosphoryl group from ATP onto the sixth carbon. Now, as we can see here, we also are working with magnesium. Now, the reason why we're working with magnesium is because the phosphoryl group 
on ATP and on glucose have negative charges. Using magnesium helps satisfy some of those charges and helps the reaction go smoothly. Now, the next reaction is that we're going to react glucose 6-phosphate with phosphohexoisomerase. So now we're talking about a new subtype of enzymes, isomerases. And all they do is turn the molecule in which they're reacting with into an isomer of itself. In this case, we're turning glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate, an isomer of glucose. So we're going from a six-membered ring to a five-membered ring. Okay, now that we've created fructose 6-phosphate, we can move on. Okay, now we're going to get fructose 6-phosphate and react it with a phosphofructokinase 1. So here comes in, into play another kinase. So in this case, the kinase is going to move a phosphoryl group from ATP onto the first carbon of fructose, forming fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So now we have two phosphoryl groups on our fructose molecule. Now, the next step is kind of a cleaving of this cyclic structure in which we have. The aldolase is going to cleave the fructose structure to create two molecules. In this case, we're going to create dihydroxyacetone phosphate, or DHAP, and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, these two molecules are isomers to one another. This one has a ketone group, and this one has an aldehyde group. Now, we're going to see glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate a lot. G3P is a really common intermediate in biological pathways. But we have a DHAP. So let's kind of look at the next step of glycolysis. The DHAP in which we formed is going to work with a triose phosphate isomerase to turn into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And so at this point in glycolysis, we have two G3Ps. So for all the reactions we look at from here on out, everything is going to be doubled since we have two G3Ps. Okay, now the next reaction is the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, G3P, is going to react with a glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Now, we're going to have an oxidizing agent in this case, which is going to be NADH+, and we're working with an inorganic phosphate. And so with these two reactions, we're going to be forming 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now, I want to finish talking about um, glycolysis in the next video. Um, I kind of just wanted to introduce the process and talk about um, how glucose enters the cell and some of the properties about glucose. But uh, thank you so much. And I'll finish talking about glycolysis in part two. And we'll move on to the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. Thank you so much. Bye.